A question for Dr. Craig. Um, I'm very interested in the probability equation you gave. And to say that it's probable that Jesus was resurrected, you must have put numbers into that equation and got an answer of greater than 0.5. I'm very interested in what the actual number was yeah. and the margin of error for it and how the individual yeah. numbers in it were determined. Thank you for that question. Richard Swinburne, who's a professor at Oxford University, has written a book on incarnation and resurrection in which he actually uses the probability calculus that I've just given, and he comes out with uh, an estimate of 0.97 for the resurrection of Jesus uh, <laughs> in terms of its probability, and you can look at his book for that. I myself don't use the probability calculus in arguing for the resurrection of Jesus. The reason I brought it up is because of, of the response to the Humean sort of argument that Dr. Ehrman was offering, which I think is completely misconceived because he tries to say the resurrection is improbable simply because of the improbability of the resurrection on the background information alone. In fact, I think that probability is, is inscrutable. I, given that we're dealing with a free agent, I don't see how we can assess or assign specific numbers to those. So the way in which I argue for the resurrection is not by using the probability calculus, it's by using what's called inference to the best explanation, which is the way historians normally work. That is to say, you assess competing historical hypotheses in terms of criteria like explanatory power, explanatory scope, plausibility, degree of ad hocness, uh, concordance with accepted beliefs, and so on and so forth. And I'm prepared to argue that when you put the resurrection hypothesis next to uh, naturalistic alternatives, you will be able to show on balance that the resurrection hypothesis comes out uh, far outstripping its rival naturalistic theories, unless you presuppose some sort of methodological atheism uh, to bar this. And I think that's what Dr. Ehrman does. In the same way I'm a believer, and therefore find God's existence quite plausible, as an unbeliever, I, I think he finds this just absurdly improbable. But he's not given us any reason to think either that God's existence is improbable or that it's improbable that God raised Jesus from the dead. In fact, he can't give an assessment of that probability given his claim about the limits on the historian. I'm sorry, I, I have trouble believing that we're having a serious conversation about the statistical probability of the resurrection or the statistical probability of the existence of God. I think in any university setting in the country, uh, if we were in front of a group of academics, we would be howled off the stage. It's not true. Well, it may not be true at the school you teach at, but at the research institution I or teach at. Oxford University where Professor Spinkard teaches. Right, so Swinburne has shown that there's a 0.97% probability. And how many people has he convinced of this exactly? These are the kinds of arguments that are convincing to people who want to be convinced. They're not serious arguments to be taken by people so that they can actually say, oh yes, now I'm going to believe because there's a 0.97% probability factor. In fact, that's nonsense. You can't demonstrate the existence of the supernatural by statistical models.